everybody and welcome to Chrono Plays in the Real World. Today we have a slightly different setup than normal because of reasons that will become clear here shortly. But today we are taking a look at the Chromecast, a wireless device that allows you to share like YouTube videos and pictures and music from your phone to your TV, your phone, your tablet, or even your laptop, oddly enough. I didn't know that until I actually got this thing. It's pretty cool. Now, is I picked this thing up at Best Buy for 30 bucks. So even if it fails miserably at what I needed to do, it's at least not that big of a risk. Not like the Gear VR, which was 200 Though I wouldn't qualify that as a waste of money at all. Anyways, so is this thing worth the $30? Let's take a look at what is inside. Well, we have the Chromecast device itself, tiny little thing that basically just plugs directly into a USB port. So basically it's like a slightly oversized USB thumb drive, except it's for video instead of just data, which is kind of cool. We have a tiny, tiny, tiny HDMI extension cable. And basically what it's for is for situations where you can't plug the thing directly into the back of the TV. Uh, everything I tried to plug it into, this thing fits into fine, into fine. It's quite tiny, it's not that big, but I can see that some people might have problems with it. So this gives you a little bit of flexibility and it's really nice that Google includes this. You also get yoink, a micro USB cable. And oddly enough, this is the first micro USB cable that I've seen come with a device that has a Velcro strap attached to it. It's like they expect it to be easily pulled out of the TV and taken somewhere else. Well, I don't know, maybe they do expect it to be easily pulled out of the TV and taken somewhere else. It's quite nice that they included that in case you did choose to. So, it's yeah, kind of nice of them. But it's a standard micro USB cable, so if you lose it, pff, you probably have about a billion of them in your house. I know I do. And it comes with a standard USB wall wart now. And I have probably, I don't know, one or two dozen of these things as well, but it is nice that they included it in case you don't have one or if the ones you are, do have are occupied. I know a lot of the ones that I have are in use. I use them for the Raspberry Pi. Hmm. So yes, very nice to include that. Now, let's start with the purpose that I bought this thing for. Now, this was supposed to take care of the problem I had with recording the Gear VR, and the problem that I had was with this guy. This is my little Netgear uh, Miracast device. Basically, I plug the HDMI in here, I plug the power in here, and then I connect my phone through the wireless adapter to this device and mirror the screen. And that's, that's all this thing does. And it does it well enough when it's plugged directly into the TV. If I plug it into my capture device right there, it doesn't work at all. This thing supports HDCP, and it requires every device between the input and the output to support HDCP. And obviously, as I mentioned in the last video, the Hop Hodge does not support HDCP because it does the exact opposite of what HDCP is supposed to do. HDCP is supposed to stop people from recording things, and the Hop Hodge is for recording things. So, yes, that's what this thing does, and it won't let me record, and... That's why I couldn't do it. So let's test the Chromecast and let's see if this thing lets me record through the Hop Hodge. And it will be fairly easy to find out if it actually, you know, turns on when I have it plugged into the Hop Hodge. So for demonstration purposes, I have set up today, we have on the little screen there, the video that's being displayed by the Hop Hodge itself. So this is my computer itself and that's what's going through the hop hodge into the computer. So this is what I would be recording if I hit the record button. On here is the live feed from the other end of the hop hodge. Basically, it's just a direct HDMI pass through. That way it's in time. There's about a one to three second delay between when I make an action in a game to when it shows up on the hop hodge. 
So they do ha have a direct HDMI throughput, so you don't have to worry about the delay. So you can actually play your game and not die miserably because you can't play it for three seconds. And this obviously is my PS3 to show you that I am actually connected through the hop hodge as much of a delay as it is, but that's just for display purposes. So let's unplug the PS4 and plug the Chromecast into the hop hodge. And then we'll plug in the power cable. Now HDMI has the ability to support power. You know, there is a power over HDMI, but I've only seen it implemented in extremely rare cases. So chances are you do not have a way to power this thing via HDMI. And there's actually also very good odds that this thing doesn't support power over HDMI because power over HDMI might be a proprietary thing that I've only actually seen in one particular instance that might have been put in place for that particular instance. So let's plug this thing in to conveniently place power. And let's see this thing start. All right, so we see that it's recognized. We see Chromecast here, we see Chromecast there. And if we wait while it's booting, no signal, but that's fine. It's just adjusting. Chrome, Chrome. And nothing. We get nothing. Black screen. And for the record, no, it's not booting. All right, I admit, I knew this was going to happen. I tested this beforehand. This was the first thing I tested after I got the Chromecast and after I got it set up and made sure it was actually working. This was the first thing I tested to see if it actually works. Now, there's an interesting little thing that happens with it. Um, the video absolutely refuses to display. The audio works perfectly fine. So I could play music through it. I could play the audio from a YouTube video through it just fine, no problem. But the video refuses to work. Now, I did a Google search for this, and this is because the Chromecast does support HDCP. And basically, it refuses to output video once the HDCP handshake fails. It's the, well, not exact same problem that I was having with the Netgear device. The Netgear device just refused to do anything. <laughs> it would be really nice if these things would pop up and say, hey, you know what? You don't support HDCP. That would be really nice. That way you know exactly what's wrong with it. You know, I would, I, if it wasn't for the fact that I did research this and I found out that this is exactly what's going on, it would be possible that it wasn't HDCP, it was just broken. But because I've tested the wires, because I've tested the device itself, and because I did research on this, I do know that it is HDCP that's giving me problems. So that means that this is not a solution to my recording of the phone problem. Oh well. What I do have to do is go online somewhere and go to some Chinese manufacturer somewhere and buy a switch, an HDMI switch, that strips out the HDCP requirement. I don't think you can buy anything in the United States that does that because we are subject to the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, and doing something like that, manufacturing something like that, would be illegal. That's why you have to import it from China, which I also believe is illegal to import something like that. Hmm. Anyways, uh, there are devices that do rip out HDCP, but they're not something that you can go down to Best Buy and pick up. There's something you do have to purchase online. Kind of sucks. But, you know, legal limitations. Mm. <laughs> Not technical limitations this time around. Well, just for the simple fact that I don't have the technology. But legal limitations right now. Kind of sucks. So, let's continue with what this thing does. It, outside of that, is it worth the money? Let me plug this thing into the TV and we'll find out. So now we are directly plugged into the TV. And as you can see, it works. So it's not the Chromecast itself, which is good. I didn't waste 30 bucks. And we can see that it's got a fairly, I don't know, it's pretty. It's a nice little picture, but it doesn't really show anything. 
and that's because it's already set up. When you plug it in for the first time, it pops up, it has its name in the corner, and it tells you you have to go to the website to set it up, uh, uh, chromecast.com slash setup. Now, you don't have to do that if you have an Android device and possibly even an iPod with iOS 6 and above because you can just use the app to set it up. So all you have to do is you download the app, you turn on your Wi-Fi, you tell the app to scan for devices, it will find the device by name, and like I said, it shows the device name, and once it tries to connect, it confirms a password that pops up on the screen in the corner. It'll just be like a small four-digit password, just to make sure that you're connecting to the right device in case your neighbors have a Chromecast or something like that. So it connects, and then it asks you for what Wi-Fi to connect to and what the web key is. And that's pretty much it. It's shockingly simple to set up. There are other options that can be set up, like the backgrounds that keep rotating. You can change which backgrounds you have. You have, uh, like, I picked satellite images. And it's just downloading random satellite images it finds on the web, I guess, or from Google, or I actually don't know where it pulls them from. But you can pick from a bunch of different types of images. You can also attach it to your G Plus account and pull from a G Plus photo album. Now, there's a problem with that that I'm not going to show because it tries to connect to the wrong Google account. I have two accounts on my phone. The one that the phone was set up for is my standard Chrono Trig account. That's the one I use for YouTube and G Plus and, well, everything, basically. I have another account that I use for work that uses my real name and real information that isn't relevant to this video, so I won't be showing it. But it doesn't have a G Plus account. Uh, it tells me every once in a while that I should set up a G Plus account, but I already have one, so why would I set up for one for work? So I don't. I don't bother. I don't let it set up one up for work. However, the Chromecast application absolutely refuses to let me choose the G Plus account I want to use. I have a G Plus account. I have a G Plus page. Pick one. <laughs> I don't care which one. Pick one. They're both assigned under the same account. The other account I have doesn't have a G Plus account, so the first thing it does is force me to sign up for a G Plus account. Eh. No, I refuse. So I'll never be using that particular function of the Chromecast, which is perfectly fine. A lot of people really just don't like Google Plus to begin with, so there's going to be a lot of people not using that particular function of the Chromecast. So what else can it do? Well, what it can do is actually kind of cool. I really like how it does it. Um, so after you get the Chromecast set up and it's working and it's at this point, basically, that is not a satellite photo, for the record. It is from NASA, though. Uh, 75th anniversary of NASA Ames. Okay, cool. Anyway, so uh, if I open up a Google application, my YouTube sucks right now. Just fair warning. It's going to be some loading times. But at the top of any application, there is a button that looks like a square with the Wi-Fi symbol in it. And if you press the square with the Wi-Fi symbol in it, it will ask you to connect to device, and it will show all available Chromecast devices. And you just tap that, and then it will connect, and it will bring up the YouTube application. Now, it probably won't work, because, like I said, my internet is kind of sucking right now. It's something I have to deal with. Oh, it's actually working. It's that the, the really crap YouTube connection is something I have to deal with when school is in. I don't fully understand how that works, but between when school lets out and about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, you know, midnight, I just can't watch YouTube videos. I really just can't. Um, and I'm assuming that's because the connection between Verizon and whatever Google uses is their ISP. I bet you the node is clogged because Verizon is notorious for letting their nodes get clogged and not upgrading their nodes like they should. Yeah, anyways, so the cool thing, the really cool thing about this is that the phone isn't on anymore, okay? I turned this phone off, 
and the Chromecast is just doing its thing. Well, the screen on the phone isn't on anymore, I should say. The phone itself is on, but if I wanted to, I could turn off the phone. I can turn it off and this would keep going because the Chromecast connects through your Wi-Fi, grabs DHCP, hopefully you have it set up. I have not found a way to set static IPs, but that's probably because I haven't dug deep enough into the details. Anyways, um, so it goes out through your local Wi-Fi and goes straight to YouTube. It's not going through the phone, it's just going straight to YouTube, which is actually really cool because that means that the phone isn't using the power. It saves battery, it saves, well, your phone. I don't know if it's actually a problem, but when I'm using the Miracast on the Netgear, where it's literally just mirroring the screen and forcing the screen to stay on, this thing heats up quite a bit. Now, I don't know if that's damaging heat, but I'd rather not fiddle with it. You know, I'd rather not risk it. So because this is going straight from the internet, that means that the phone stays cool. So I can watch YouTube videos on anything I plug my Chromecast into, and it just works, which is awesome. And of course, it also saves battery life, which, as I say a lot, this thing has amazing battery life. However, a lot of phones don't. Uh, my, I mean, the Nexus 4, if I tried really, really hard, I could get it to survive for two days and one night. So basically, I could skip a charging session. The Nexus 1, um, I charged it every day, basically. Uh, I could probably maybe get through half of the next day. So battery life is important for a lot of people. So having this not use the phone constantly is a bonus. Now, YouTube isn't the only application that uses mirror, or uses the Chromecast directly. You can do it with Google Music. I'm assuming quite a few other Google applications. I know Pandora does. There is a, you know, if you go to the app on your phone, the Chromecast app, and look for apps, like you can actually find apps through the Chromecast app. Sounds redundant, doesn't it? Uh, it gives you a giant, giant, giant list of applications that support the Chromecast. And that's really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, we have huge advantage here with all of that stuff. But when it comes to the Netgear, the Netgear was more useful than this because anything I could play on the phone, I could play through the Netgear. Well, this can do that too. You have to go into the Chromecast app, hit the menu, and hit the cast screen button. And once you hit cast screen, it will bring you up to the cast screen section. It'll warn you that it's a beta setting. And then you hit cast screen. Select the device, boop, and it will connect, and it will duplicate what's on the screen. And it flips it sideways even, and that's really, really cool. However, I have noticed a small problem, and let's see if I can repeat this. I was in cardboard, fired up the cardboard demo. Okay, so this is sideways, and then I tried to pull up the windy day demo. So I pulled that up. Oh, you bastard. It's that drift problem that I was telling you about with the cardboard. It drifted over and selected uh, Google Earth. So let's try that again. Windy, no, windy day. There it did it. Okay, the Windy Day app is sideways on the phone. It's horizontal, but it's playing vertical. Now, I'm going to assume that that's actually a problem with the Windy Day cartoon itself. I would, I'm going to assume that's because when they programmed the Windy Day demo, they programmed it vertically and then just flipped the image 90 degrees. I'm going to assume that's the problem, but yeah, that's something that shouldn't really be a problem because you're not really going to use that. Go away. You're not really going to use that through the phone here. 
And you know what? I never actually tested to see if that was a problem on the Netgear device either. But I would assume that's a problem with the phone itself. With Well, with the app specifically. So it's not a problem with the phone. So that's okay. Um, so, yeah. This thing will do everything that the Netgear will do. Also, it has the ability to take the load off of the phone for an asinine level of apps. Like, like let's go into Chromecast. And we go to Discover Apps. Okay. And let's just click on Featured. Okay, so we have all of these applications that are on here. Holy crap, Plex supports Miracast. That is amazing. Or Chromecast. I keep mixing up the two. There are things that I have never heard of. Uh, there are plenty of things. Somehow Google Plus supports Chromecast. You know, I poked at it. I can't find the setting to do that. But, you know, whatever. But it does a lot of things. The Revision 3 app supports Chromecast. So I could imagine that the Chromecast API has just been opened up to everybody. And a lot of people are just doing that. And it's really, really cool. And I really, really like the idea. Um, is there anything else really interesting that's on here? No. I mean, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the majority of this device right here. It's just basically... Fancy. <laughs> it, it's fancy wireless screen mirroring. And that's it. But that is more than enough to make it worth the $30. It is. It is most definitely worth more than enough to, make the, to, to be worth the $30. So I would suggest if you have a Android device version, I believe it's 4.2. It might be 4.4, but I believe it's 4.2 or higher. And a TV that you don't have a media center PC plugged into, go for it. Seriously. I mean, you can't really go wrong with this thing. Um, it's not that big of an investment and it does a lot of really cool stuff. Of course, if you care about that kind of stuff, but I do. So, Yes, I really highly do recommend the Chromecast. It is really worthwhile. It cost less than that Netgear device that I got. Now, just for to let you guys know, I got the Netgear device for a completely different reason. It was for sharing a laptop screen with a separated monitor, and the laptop was supposed to be completely mobile. Uh, however, the Intel software that's supposed to work with the Netgear doesn't show up on the net on the Intel devices that it's supposed to show up on. Yeah. But anyways, uh, the Chromecast works great. I highly recommend it. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I do want to point out this though. Um, it does work with the iPod uh, with iOS 6 and above. There is a Chromecast app that does work. Um, let us pull up the Chromecast app. Okay, I got it working. Um, I had to disable the Wi-Fi and re-enable it on my device before it recognized that the Chromecast even existed. So, just a small problem with my particular device. So, anyways, I've got my YouTube app installed and open on my iPod. I can hit my Screencast button and it will ask me what device I want to connect to. So I connect to Red5, which is what I've been using and it will pull up the YouTube app. Now, the advantage of doing it this way is that it doesn't rely on how powerful the device is. Since the Chromecast itself can just connect to the internet and make it work, you know, it that's all that's important. And yes, I can control it from here. If this thing ever decides to load, yes, boop. So let's pause it, there we go. All right, so that's cool. All right, that's actually really nice. And we will disconnect from that right now. However, if we go into the Chromecast software and we select the options, there is no screencast option for the iPod. And when we look at the apps, the available apps, there just aren't really that many. Chrome, Google+, YouTube, you know, basically Google apps. So I don't 
Yeah. Um, not nearly as useful on the iPhone or the iPod as it is on the Android devices. Uh, that might be a limitation of my particular iPod because I only have the Gen 4 and what, Gen 6s are out now? So that might be a limitation of that or it might be a limitation of the fact that it's Google trying to interact with Apple. I mean, that's why they make Apple TVs, isn't it? I would assume you can do pretty much similar to the same thing on Apple TV. I don't know. I never played with them before. But, yes, um, that's about it. Um, you can connect to this Chromecast on the laptop, on like a laptop or a desktop, but it has to be through the Chrome OS or the Chrome browser. That's the word I was looking for. It has to be through the Chrome browser, and you have to download the Chromecast add-on for the Chrome browser to make it work. Okay. No arguments there. Um, so let's, let's roll with that. So uh, to reiterate, is it worth the money? Yes, it is worth the money. I would highly recommend it. It's a really cool device. I'm not going to leave it plugged in here because I do have a Media Center PC plugged in here. However, I do intend on using it. This is not just something that's going to be sitting in a corner somewhere. I'm actually thinking about using it out in the kitchen so I can watch videos while I'm cooking, you know. So, yes, I'd say that's about it, hopefully. And I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.